Hi, my name is Kate, this is my channel, and today I want to do a review of a book that I loved in my childhood that I thought I had lost. Um, in my recent video, um, Booktube Newbie, Booktube Newbie Tag video that I did, I talked about um, this book that I read as a child, as like an eight-year-old, that I loved so much, and I told a story about how I found out that I could possibly have, could have met the author, but missed my opportunity. Um, and I despaired over the fact that I had lost my copy and um, it's no longer in print. Well, over Christmas, I went up to my parents' house and my younger sister was like, oh, I'm getting rid of all of these books because they're not mine and I don't want them anymore. They're taking up space on my bookshelf. I think they were yours. Do you want any of them? So of course I had a look through them and oh my God, it wasn't lost, it was at my parents' house. Oh my god, I was so excited. <laughs> so, I think in my video I called it the Circle of Magic. It's actually called the Center of Magic. Um, so it's the Center of Magic by Pamela Freeman, and it is a Floramond book. And according to Goodreads, it is book four of the Floramond books, Floramond series. Didn't know that. Um, but I have re I've re I read it. I read it in like two hours, two or three hours yesterday, um, and I can see how it um it, there's clearly like other stories that have happened like previously, um, but I don't think I noticed that as an eight year old. So I want to see if I can maybe track down these other books. Like, do they exist somewhere in the world? Um, because I think I would like to read those. Um, so this is going to be a really short little review because it's you know. That's the size of the text. It's not like a difficult book. I read it when I was eight. How many pages is it? It's a hundred and sixty-four pages long. Um, so this book is about um, uh, Joe, who um, is an apprentice gardener at the palace, um, and she's somehow like really good friends with not really good friends, but is in a trusted circle with um, the princess. Um, what's her name? Bethany, Bethany, and her husband Basil, um, and the king and queen. Um, they go off on an adventure because there's been a spell that's been cast. Um, they don't know by who, but it's the reader knows who. It's by a wizard called Colchus, Colchus, Colchus. What's his name? Colchus, Colchus. Um, and so that, and it's gone. The spell has actually gone wrong. This wasn't his intention to do this, but um. Everyone, all the everyone in the kingdom is turning into an animal, mythical or um, otherwise, and um, they sort of realise that it's a representation of their true self. Um, so they everyone's turning into all these animals and like oh, not my ideal, and so they're trying to um, uh, break the spell. Um, so a lot of it was really. The relationships between characters were a bit silly. It didn't take into account the um, power differential um, between a lot of these people. You know, the apprentice gardener wouldn't be friends with the princess and wouldn't just be like invited into the the council meetings just because she, maybe she'll know something. She's like sixteen and she's the apprentice gardener. She's not going to know something of account of that's going to matter to this, um, you know. So there's things like that were a little bit silly, um, but I still really liked it. Um, the bad guy Colchis, Colchis was um, basically a big baby, and funnily enough, he turns into a baby when he gets put into like his true, true self. He gets made a baby. Um, but I think while while he was a big baby and a big sook, I think actually a lot of bad guys are actually just big big sooks throwing a tantrum. Like, well, let's not talk about the new Star Wars movies with Kylo Ren, who like he's a big baby throwing a tantrum. Um, but a lot of other um, uh, fantasy novels and you know the villains in these just don't really have great motives and they're kind of lame and throwing a tantrum. Um, but what I found really interesting was the motives behind his tantrum um, had to do with, like, um, 
suppose, um, like fair employment and working conditions and labor laws and stuff, which was like a really interesting way of doing it. And then as well, when they came to like break the spell, they were talking a lot about, but is it fair? Like what if people want to stay how they are? What if they're happier how they are? Do we have the right to make that decision for them? Um, and you know, because all this magic has come out, you know, the, the spirits of the trees and stuff have become personified and there are dryads and they're alive. And if we break the spell, all of these dryads are going to die. And is that fair to put our, our rights above theirs, our desires above their desires? Um, so there was a lot of like ethical dilemma going on in this, which is like, you know, as a book that I read when I was eight, it was quite impressive. Um, so I think it's actually, there's actually quite a, quite a lot of complex ideas in this book, even though, um, as I said, the relationships are a bit unrealistic. Um, and there's clearly a lot of quite interesting world building for the, um, types of, um, mythical creatures and stuff like that. Like the magic system seemed quite, um, sophisticated and the, the ecosystems, the magical ecosystem seems quite sophisticated, even if the, um, yeah, the relationships are a bit, but, um, and you know, the, the, the main character, Jo, it was a bit frustrating in that, like, she was, you know, a bit tubby, a bit clumsy, socially awkward, didn't, like, know how to deal with people, and then, like, has become the trusted advisor of the prince and princess, and then it's going to become the, like, at the end, they're like, we're going to make you the Lord Chancellor or something. It's like, really? <laughs> okay um but overall it was really fun and I'm really really glad that I found it that I found that it's, I still have it and that I'm glad that my sister thought to give it back to me I'm so glad she just didn't like throw it away or donate it to a charity shop or something I'm so so glad that I got to keep it so I'm going to track down see if I can track down the other books in this series and um give them a red hot go as well so if you know somebody in your life who might appreciate this kind of book, like I think it's a great gateway to fantasy kind of book for a, a young person, probably under the age of about 10. Once you hit about 10, it's probably not going to be great for you anymore. Um, but at the same time, it might take a bit of an advanced reader because it is, um, there is some complex um, language stuff and there is a lot of text in there for a, like an eight-year-old to read. Um, but yeah. So that's um, The Centre of Magic by Pamela Freeman. Um, I recommend it. So I'm Kate, this is my channel, and it's been my review of The Centre of Magic by Pamela Freeman. Bye.